these photographs come uh, from uh, postcards, enlarged postcards of the old Juarez. This is the city I knew when I was a child. During those years, the city was a small place, and uh, I knew the, all the city. We grew up together. Burritos Tony claims to have invented that staple of Mexican cuisine, and it's where photojournalist Julian Cardona took us to see what Ciudad Juarez once was, a lively but comfortable place hard by the Rio Grande River across from El Paso, Texas. His parents moved here with him in 1960 from farther south, as so many others did, looking for the plentiful jobs on the border in U.S.-owned factories known as maquiladoras. Fed up with his own humdrum work in the plants, in 1993 he joined the local newspaper, El Diario, as the city was growing by 50,000 a year. By the 90s, the whole city uh, had several industrial parks and hundreds of plants. TV set was made every three seconds, and a computer was made every seven seconds. I was interested since the beginning to show uh, the growing economy, underground economy, in the city. The new arrivals put up dwellings anywhere they could, even cardboard houses with sewage canals behind them. In many cases, the newcomers were taking any kind of, of, of land to settle. We are on the exact place where I took these pictures uh, on mid-90s. In the picture, you see the sunset behind that mountain or hill. Mm -hmm. You see one house, and one guy is working on, on, on his house. During the 90s, I came here to cover the new settlements, during recent years, to cover murders. There were several women who were found in this area. Hundreds of Juarez women have been murdered over the last two decades, their bodies dumped on city streets, or discovered in the vast desert beyond, or never found at all. Well, this fence. Cardona saw the chaos coming. He shot these photographs in 1995 as the economy boomed and homicides began to surge. This photograph was taken on the boundary of two warring uh, gangs in, in, in one barrio. In some way, I saw it coming. The, the city was growing in a chaotic way, and that wasn't sustainable for any society. Two years later, a turning point. The story begins here. The first public killing in the history of the city. Six people executed gangland style in a restaurant after a bullfight downtown. It was the biggest massacre of uh, all the history of the city. Six people, it was very big news. During that time, many people were not aware that the city was becoming more chaotic uh, little by little, and that the drug business was growing. Growing because of the proximity to the United States and its giant illicit market. Growing because it promised vast and fast riches to people used to nothing. What we have seen is the underground economy was uh, developed into the economy of crime. First drugs and recent years have been added kidnapping extortion, housejacking, carjacking. You get a job when you are a kidnapper. You get a job when you kill somebody for $100 or $200. It's an economy. It is harder to eradicate this kind of economy than just a couple of gangs warring against each other. Before long, the gangs weren't just killing each other, but preying on ordinary people, kidnapping for ransom and extortion. There were a lot of people who decided to cross the border to save their lives. And like you see that pharmacy, it's closed. Photo studio is closed. Mm -hmm. You see many other, some other places closed. Army troops arrived in 2008, but the violence only grew. More than 3,600 people were killed in 2010. That year saw particularly grisly mass murders within months of each other. Some 30 teenage students felled by bullets at birthday parties. During the recent years, we have had more than 10,000 homicides 
And for three or four years, we have been rated as the most violent city on earth. Murders in Juarez did drop last year to just under 2,000. And last month, the city posted the lowest body count in years, still one murder every 10 hours. Sitting in Burrito's Tony, Cardona says he wouldn't think of accepting offers to move elsewhere. I'm staying because this is my, my city. It's an important story how a city becomes the most violent city on earth. I was able to do it, and I'm okay with that. It's my job. He takes us to the end of that story for all too many. We're at the Municipal Cementerio San Rafael Cemetery. And this place is what is known as Fosa Comun, the mass grave. Who's buried here? Those who are not uh, recognized by their relatives, at, at some point when the morgue is packed with bodies, they decide to, to send the identified uh, persons uh, to the mass grave. But we do see some crosses here. There are some marked areas. I think those, at certain times there are people who are so afraid even to, to have a funeral for their relative and they avoid identifying the body and after a certain time they go and find a place where the body is found and they put a cross. And so they're still adding bodies here? They're still adding body, uh, bodies here. And in these sand dunes south of Juarez, there's still plenty of space to fill.